Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of 7 Minute AE Tutorials where you learn tips, tricks, and shortcuts in 7 minutes or less. No BS, just AE. This episode rounds out our character creation 5 part series. So far we've built our character's face and body and we've rigged our character and we went over the basics of Duik, a free third party plugin specifically designed for rigging and animating characters. In this episode, I'm going to go over ways to give your character personality while you animate movements, and you can download the project file to practice and get started on your own character creation. We have a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Okay, so I've created this After Effects project and I've made a character named Bob. And I've given Bob a few movements here that we can go over. I also created this comp for our color controller. We have gone over this in previous episodes, but I wanted you to have this so whenever you create your own character or if you wanna work off the one that I've created here, you have everything ready to go. Okay, so here's our character Bob. Now, in order to save time and uh, to get this tutorial in about seven minutes, I've already created some movements for you. This should all look familiar from our previous episodes. We have our layers here parented to one another. Uh, right hand is parented to lower arm, lower arm is parented down here to upper arm, and so on. And all of these comps, these different movements, Bob has everything parented the way that we need it. We are not using Duik for this, so I'm going to go ahead and just close this out. This is rigging that I've used directly in After Effects. Okay, so let's go over these three movements here. Oh, let's go over Bob thinking. With no layer selected, if you hit U, it brings up all of your keyframes here. Okay, and as you can see, for just this one movement for thinking, we have quite a few keyframes. Our lower right arm, as we can see, is the one that's going to his head and it's scratching. So as his arm goes up, we have his hand scratching scratching his head. But if you notice also, there's a lot of other movements going on here. He's not just scratching his head. Uh, the eyes are constantly blinking, but as his arm goes up to scratch, notice his eyebrows are moving. We have his foot tapping. We have his other arm that goes up and goes to his chin. So just remember whenever you're creating these movements, it's not just the actual movement itself that you want to focus on, but you want to use as many other body parts as you possibly can. Notice how his body lifts up right here. If we click U again, we can collapse all these. And this layer right here, waist core, this is the one that you'll notice is not parented to anything. Everything is parented to, to another layer and that final layer all comes to waist. So if you bring up those keyframes, you can see right here as he moves up and he moves back down. Okay, now let's go to a wave shot. And again, let's hit U to bring up our keyframes. So as you can see, we have one arm that's waving, another arm goes to his hip, his eyebrows move up. You could even move his legs if you wanted. My suggestion is to make use of as many body parts as you can, just to give your character as much personality as possible. The more movement you can give, the more realistic it's gonna come across. And that's really evident in this movement right here, this, this jump movement. Let's hit U to bring up our keyframes. And I'm just going to loop this. I'm hitting B and N to bring in these handles. His hair is bouncing as he jumps. His eyebrows are bouncing as he jumps as well. Even his eyes have a slight bounce on them. And we're moving both arms and his legs and kind of lifting them off the ground. So as you can see, just for this one movement, we have all of these keyframes here. I always make my keyframes bezier just to kind of give it more of a natural bounce. There may be times when you need to use linear keyframes or you may even need to control the speed of your keyframes. But for basic movements like this, a simple bezier should work. So just remember, whenever you're doing these movements, you want to move multiple body parts so everything kind of works together. If you notice, the start and end position are the same. For example, right here, his right upper leg. Use this arrow here to jump to our next keyframe. See, that's when he kind of squats down a little bit. And then the third keyframe is when he's in full jump. And then I just used this keyframe here. See if we copy and paste. And then this last keyframe is actually our first keyframe. Copy and paste. So you want to keep that in mind as well with certain movements like this, like with this jump. As long as you have half the movement up until the midpoint, you can reverse the keyframes that you have created for the beginning of that movement. If you highlight these and then you copy them and then you right click keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes, it will just place those in the reverse order. Let's go back to our Bob thinking. For your head layer, you want to have control over as many things as possible. We have all of these layers because you may not know which movements require control over which body parts. So we have a hair layer, 
left eyebrow, right eyebrow, and as you can see these keyframes here, we are moving the eyebrow up and down. You also want to be able to control your left eye and right eye for your blinking. You may want to move your ears on a jump or a bounce. Your mouth, definitely want to be able to control that. Like in this example, the way his mouth moves as he goes to think. So just make sure whenever you're creating these character heads that you can control as much as possible. And you may want to consider creating a color controller so that way you can uh, instantaneously change the color of your hair, your shirt, your pants, your skin, and things like that. One of the things that you might want to consider is creating uh, a comp with no movement on your character. So like for example, let's just uh, duplicate this Bob Jump 2 and we'll call this Bob Static. And then if we go into here, Let's make sure to grab all of these keyframes and just get rid of those. Make sure we don't delete our eye blinking. So that way we have a clean copy of this character just kind of standing there. But say if you know that you want to create other movements, all you have to do is duplicate the static comp. So actually, let's make this kind of stand out. So if you put an underscore in front of everything, it will move it to the top of your list here. So now we have Bob static, we have jump, thinking, wave. Say we wanted to do another movement, Bob kicking. So now we have this comp here, this completely clean, and we can start over from the beginning. So always make sure that you use this first comp, this Bob static, as your source to go back and create multiple movements. I'm including the project files so you can get moving on creating and rigging a character. I hope this series has been helpful. We've only scratched the surface of character creation, rigging, and animation, but you should have the tools to get started. I highly recommend you check out other tutorials dedicated to character creation. Check back next week as we resume our usual series tackling AE tips, tricks, and shortcuts seven minutes at a time. Please remember to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.